In this lesson, I'm going to show you about color replacement as well as the dodge tool. That's this tool down here. So let's try some color replacement. Let's pick that. Uh, sunflower. Let's try that. Now see this section here in the middle of the sunflower where it's a little greenish yellow? Let's say we want to replace that color or change that color. Well, first of all, we would want to use a selection tool so we're only dealing with this section. See, because when you're dealing with adjusting the entire, th if you're trying to adjust just a small section of something, and yet you have the whole picture here without using a selection tool, it's going to want to make adjustments to the whole thing. It'll make it more difficult for you to, um, to pick out that one section you want changed. That's what's so advantageous about the selection tools. We can grab it and pull. Oh, by the way, with the, uh, the circle tools, let me undo and show you something. As far as the um, elliptical marquee tool, rectangular marquee tool, you notice how you can make a long ellipsis or try to make a perfect circle? Well, you're not limited with just trying to make a perfect circle. If you click and hold shift down as you pull, it makes a perfect circle no matter how big, just so you know. And the same goes with the rectangle tool. You can make it a long rectangle, tall, but if you want a perfect rectangle, you hold down shift like so. Alright, so let's choose the elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to hold down shift because I want just that center section of the sunflower selected like so. Looks about right, then I'll move it around maybe right there. And now I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit Now we go to image. Now it's only going to adjust what's inside that ellipsis. Let's go to image adjustments, replace color. All right. So, this is the color. Now what do we want to replace it with? And then this is the image, the selection, right? So the eyedropper tool allows you to choose similar colors that you're going to actually change. And the fuzziness allows you to choose what surrounding pixels that are of similar color you want changed. You see how as I decrease this, I clicked in here, so it's just going to choose mostly green stuff. But the more I fuzz out, the more it's going to pick uh, dissimilar colors. So I'm going to say somewhere like there. So it'll do a little bit of highlighting out there, but mostly change the inside. Now we can adjust the hue. So we could either adjust it here. Let's move the saturation up, just see what that looks like. See how much greener that looked? When you go down, you can take out the saturation. You can go up. The lightness, we can make it dark, right? But we can change the color entirely. Look, we changed it to a more red color. Purple. <laughs> Green or we can choose, click on the color and choose one ourselves. But I like it darker like that for some reason. See, and then we can add pixels like more in the center here. See how it didn't cover that whole section because there's such diverse colors in there. Anyway, you get it how you want. Hit OK. We back out to 100% where we were. And now that flower has a more um, redder, oranger look. And then we can go select, deselect. But you can basically do that with anything. Replace the color with another color. Now I want to show you the dodge tool. Now the dodge tool is very unique. Let's close this picture and not save the changes. We're going to go and grab this little girl at the beach, island girl. 
And that's how she's all shadowed. You can't see her very well. Well, the dodge tool can allow us to lighten up just the sections we want by using a brush. So let's go to dodge, which is here. Get the heck out of dodge. Here we go. Dodge tool. All right, now, if you notice up here, we can choose our brush size if we want it. Um, let's, uh, let's zoom into her face. And I'm going to go back to the dodge tool. And what do we want to adjust? Midtones, shadows, highlights. Leave it on midtones. And then how light do you want to make it? That's the exposure. So now, I need a smaller brush. 79. That'll work, I think. That'll probably even be better. All right, 34 is what I chose. Now, watch as I drag the brush over her face. And now, those shadows are disappearing. In just the spots I'm choosing. And it looks like that did it a little too light. I don't like it. So I'm going to go undo. And now I'm going to back out and try adjusting with a larger brush. Let's try that. Whoops. Let's try 30%. Yeah, OK. All right, I'm going to pick a larger brush. See, it's, it's all about experimenting and getting it the way you want it as opposed to um, there's no right or wrong way to get all this stuff. All right, let's try that. OK. See, it's lightening up the whole picture. OK, I'm going to go back. See, it takes time to get all this stuff Perfect. I need a bigger brush. Let's just let's just lighten this down here because that'll be easy to get perfect. <laughs> it's all about how much time you want to spend, right? And each time you release and go back, it adds more. For instance, I'm going to click once here and move it around a little bit. See, and it's only going to do so much. But if I release and click again, then it's going to make it even lighter. Anyway, so that's one way to lighten a picture using the dodge tool. You can experiment later with shadows and highlights, but that's a way of just adjusting the lightness at a specific section and kind of brush in that section rather than making a uh, using the elliptical tool or some other selection tool where you're confined to a specific hard area. This gives you more of a brushed effect that lightens up just the sections you're brushing. So, enjoy that.